Welcome to the Herald Democrat Sports Podcast. I'm the sports editor of the Herald Democrat, Jason Del Rosa, and you're listening to the latest edition of the Herald Democrat Sports Podcast. Week two of the playoffs is upon us. We have gotten past the first week. We have a bunch of teams that have advanced. We had a couple teams to lose. We're going to talk about it all here. Week 13 of the high school football season. Thanksgiving is around the corner, and you know what that means. That means we're going to get some juicy matchups. But to get there, we got to get through this week. And to get through this week, you had to get through last week. And like I said, most of our teams did. So we will go from the top to the bottom like we always do. And we will talk about the teams in those classifications and in those divisions, whether they won or lost. And if they won, we'll preview. And if not, we'll just recap. I feel like that's probably the easiest way to do it. Just keep everything together in one little bit as teams get eliminated. And so we'll work our way from the top, and that means we will start with the Van Alstine Panthers with a Class 4A Division 2 Region 2 area round game this Friday, 7 o'clock in Texarkana. Uh, we do have some long trips this week uh, for just about everybody. Um, unfortunately, realignment has 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 really has really widened the map. Uh, as you'll see with some of the locations for some of the games this this week, Van Alstine's one of them. As they go out to Texarkana, uh, they are seven and four after beating Quinlan Ford fifty five to twenty seven. Carthage comes in at eleven and zero. They won last week uh, easily forty two to seven. And to touch on Van Alstine's game last week, it was a dog fight at halftime, uh, tied at twenty, back and forth. Some crazy, uh, some crazy plays, some crazy touchdowns. Uh, to get us to 20, it was it was cold and windy. Of course, we talked about last week. They were the only team to play on Friday. Everybody else played on Thursday. They got their games in before this the the windy conditions and temperatures down in the in the in the low 50s and in the 40s uh, hit on Friday. Um, so it was a little crazy. And of course, we talked about Van Alstine was coming off a bye. They hadn't played in two weeks. Maybe they were a little rusty. But once they got into halftime, uh, figured out a couple things. Uh, they broke this game wide open with four touchdowns um, in the in the third quarter, and they've done it the way they have all season that we've talked about. This running duo uh, of Dakota Howard and Jaden Mahan, uh, two more big games this week. Uh, Howard, 19 carries, 240 yards, uh, three touchdowns on the ground. He also had a 62-yard punt return for a touchdown um, there in, as part of that third quarter uh, outburst. Mayhan, 25 carries, 144 yards, uh, and three touchdowns as well. Uh, Shane McCaslin chipped in a touchdown, uh, the final one. Um, Jackson Allen, four k- carries for 30 yards, only had had the only catch, the only completion out of uh, Van Alstine's three throws, but it was a big one on fourth down uh, for five yards right at the sticks to keep a drive, a touchdown drive going, um, and and. Van Alstine was able to pull away. They really shut down Quillen Ford in the, in the second half. Um, and if not for a, a touchdown with 12 seconds left, they would have pitched um, a second-half shutout. Um, I think at one point um, through a quarter and, like, four minutes, um, Van Alstine had allowed, like, seven yards or something crazy like that. It was They, they really shut them down. They got, some tur- they, they got a turnover, um, uh, made some things happen. Uh, shut down some of the big plays that uh, Quinlan Ford had gotten in the first in the first half. So they move on, um, and they're taking on a, a Carthage team that uh, is a perennial power out in East Texas. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows about um, the Carthage history and what they've been able to do over the years. Um, so it's not it's not the draw that you were looking for uh, if you were Van Alstine. Um, you know this early. You know you obviously would like to see them. Um, a little bit later in the bracket, um, but what are you going to do? The bracket is now the bracket, and and like like we're seeing with um, how it is set up going forward, um, this is what you're going to have to deal with. And just to give you a little history for those, because you may not pay attention out in East Texas, so Carthage has won uh, the state championship in 2020, 2019, 2017, 2016, 2013, 2010. 2009, 2008. So that's the history that you're dealing with. And if you want to throw in in that time span, um, they uh, they also and that's every time they made the final, they won it. So that not only is that winning a state championship, they're getting to the championship and they've won 
every time in that stretch. Um, so, so you're dealing with a lot of history. You're dealing with a program that, that, um, is, is always considered among the favorites in, uh, the state. So this is a total underdog situation. If you're Van Alstine, you, you're going out there. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, you know, the Panthers love their, their linemen on both sides of the ball. You know, coach Miller said after when I was talking to him after this game, um, you know, that's, that's what makes our, our, our guys go. Uh, that's what allows, um, Dakota Howard and Jed Mahan to do the, some of the things that they do. Um, there, there are good holes. Uh, and then like we said on the, on the other side of the ball, once they figured out what, uh, Quinlan Ford was, was doing, uh, they shut that down. So, um, it, it's going to be interesting to see if Van Alstine can keep it close for a little bit, get, get that confidence going, put some down to Carthage. I, I, you know, it's, it's the way they the way they run their offense I think is conducive to that. Um, you know if you can get if you can get a couple first downs if you can break a, a big play. You know we talk about in this game here. Um, you know Van Alstine's first touchdown was a 52 yard run by uh, Howard. He goes untouched. Um, first play of the third quarter, 70 yard run, weaving around, making something happen, gain the sideline, a touchdown. Uh, first play after a turnover after a turnover um, on the next drive. Mayhan, boom, right up the middle. No one's there. Uh, is able to is able to get through the line, and and, and he's off for a 32 yard run. We talk about the 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 punt return, um, 62 yards. Um, if they can if they can get some of those big plays, but also be able to move the sticks and grind out, um, you know, a five minute possession, even if it doesn't end in points, just to limit what Carthage can do. Um, uh, they've scored 41 points in every game. Uh, they've got four shutouts. So they they do it on they do it on both sides of the ball. Obviously they're undefeated. Um, I don't know how how much you can take away from the Pittsburgh uh, matchup. I think Pittsburgh was two and eight as um, as a four seed. So I think that forty two seven is obviously what you would expect, uh, if not worse, um, considering the matchup. And I know we said going into the Van Alstine Quinlan four matchup, it was kind of 50 50, 6 and four versus five and five. And for a half, it was you know it was a tie game going going into the second half. Um, the winner of this plays Gainesville Gilmer. It's probably going to be Gilmer. Um, although I will point out, if we get a double upset, you would be talking about you know Gainesville and Van Alstine uh, playing just uh, you know a couple weeks after they played uh, in district play in that key game, um, and obviously that would so that would be uh, something to shoot for. I'm assuming um, you know people on the Gilmer side, which is another you talk about those East Texas powers, Carthage and Gilmer, um, that that. They're they're looking their chops to have that game uh, out in East Texas at, at one of the big stadiums out there to draw a lot of interest um, in the in the region semifinals. Um, so that's what Van Alstine's looking at. They got a long road trip. Um, they're facing um, a powerhouse program, um, and we'll see if they can pull the upset. Um, you know, they look they, they look the part of an underdog. They've got an offense that can make some things happen. Um, the question is, can you can you win a shootout if you need to, or can you grind out? um some yards and keep some drives going instead of doing some three and out type of things um and i would say too you know what might be overlooked is um if they have to pass um you know it may not be a whole lot but when they do can you hit on those opportunities um you know if you're only going to throw three five seven times you you can't go two a seven you got to go four a seven and hit a big play and maybe get a touchdown or um, if you throw when it's on third and long or a fourth down, you got to convert it to keep that drive going. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Obviously, you know, you, you go in, you go in, there's a lot of people that probably aren't giving you a chance and maybe that's the way you like it. I feel like last year, um, when Van Alsi made the playoffs, um, there were a lot of people that said, oh, they're not going to win the first round. Um, you know, they were even, they were even lower seed than they were this year. Um, and that, and they almost, uh, and they almost won the second round games as well. So, um, so, so they've been in this kind of situation before. People kind of overlooking them. I think there might have been some people that were overlooking them in the first round, just because Quinlan Ford had such a good year last year um, that maybe they were able, they were going to be able to carry that over into this year, even though their record was not as good. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be excited to see what Van Alstine can do uh, in the 4A Division Two Region Two area round against Carthage in Texarkana. That's seven o'clock on Friday. If you plan on making the long trip out there. Um, and speaking of long trips, we're going to be doing that a lot. Uh, we go down to Class 3A, Division 1, Region 1 area game between 
Whitesboro and Dalhart. This game is at 6 p.m. on Friday, and it's in Childress. So if you thought going to Texarkana was long, you can go to Childress at 6 o'clock on Friday and watch Whitesboro, who is 9-1. Uh, they cruised in their game 60-6 against Vernon, and Dalhart uh, won 31-21 against Denver City, and they're 5-5. Five and five. So they went in with a losing record. Uh, they were able to uh, come away with a win, keep their season alive for another week. So if you're Whitesboro, you have an opponent who um, has already pulled one upset, and they'd really love to pull another one, and they're confident uh, because they got on this little bit of a roll here. Um, and if you're Whitesboro, you want to keep doing what you're doing. And what you did last week was you jumped up uh, 18 nothing in the first quarter. Uh, you were up 39-6 to at halftime, and basically that game with Vernon was over. Um, and Grayson Ledbetter led the way, 12 carries, 164 yards, um, had three touchdowns running, also caught a touchdown pass from Mac Harper, uh, who was seven of 16 passing 114 yards, um, had two touchdowns, um, excuse me, had three touchdowns, uh, the one to Ledbetter. He also had one to Brett Donaldson. Donaldson, uh, had three catches for 44 yards and also had one to Jay Sanders. Um, and he also, Harper also ran, uh, seven times for 66 yards. Uh, Colin Phillips added a touchdown run. Uh, Carter Sluter added a touchdown run. And uh, like we said, this was a game that was that was pretty much uh, pretty much over at halftime, which you would expect of a program that went to the state quarterfinals, has a lot of guys back, whose only losses to um, a state ranked team, uh, and and is is looking to kick things off um, for another deep run. Um, and so I guess the the thing with that is when you look at like I said when you look at Dalhart, you don't want to get too overconfident because you're nine and one and they're five and five. Um, but this is a game if you're going into obviously I think Whitesboro obviously is the favorite. Um, a lot of people are picking Whitesboro uh, to do that rematch with Brock. We got a ways to go to get there, but it's off to a good start with that one over Vernon. Um, Whitesboro's trying to get to the, to the region semifinals uh, for the second straight year, fourth time overall. Uh, if they win this game, they will match the school record for wins, uh, matching the 2013 team. Um, and you're and the winner's going to play the Paradise Shallow Water winner, which is interesting from a Whitesboro standpoint because, one, you have Paradise, who's in their district. We had that close game, uh, the 18-7 to game in the bad weather a couple weeks ago at Whitesboro. Um, so that would be a rematch and shallow water. And for those Whitesboro fans who remember last year, uh, that would be a rematch from the playoffs of last year. And a lot of people went into that game. Shallow water uh, was the favorite. And that was a game that Whitesboro won rather handily. And I think maybe that was the game that sort of turned people into going, Hmm, well, this is an interesting, this is an interesting team. Whitesboro has, uh, in making that run, uh, you know, having the best, uh, playoff appearance ever by getting to the region final. So um, either way, if Whitesboro advances, um, it's going to be a, a rematch either from this year or from last year that's got some significance to it. Uh, it's got a little juice to it. And um, like I said, I think the biggest thing is um, can Whitesboro just come out and do what they did last week? Put the game away. You don't want Dalhart hanging around. You don't want them thinking upset number two this is our year to make a run and with nobody's nobody expects us to do anything. Um, it is a long road trip. Uh, it's going to be a long road trip for, for Dalhart. They're way up. They're not, I don't know if they're way up in the panhandle, but they're up in the panhandle, uh, you know, North of Lubbock. And so, um, it's going to be, it's, you know, I think, I think we could see more of the same from last week. Um, but again, you never know, you never know with the weather, you never know with a long road trip, how long it takes, uh, to get going in that regard. Um, but I think Whitesboro is in really good shape um, again, and you have to feel good uh, next week, especially if they play Paradise, because that's a game they've already won. So you kind of know what you're getting in that opponent. Maybe Shallow Water is a little different from um, from what they've done uh, in the past, graduation, all that sort of stuff. So um, so that's what that's what Whitesboro is going to be doing with their three A Division One Region One area round game going out to Childress Friday at 6 p.m against Dalhart. We will see what happens there with the Bearcats. Um, also in 3A Division One, over in Region 2, the area round game there, Pottsboro advances. They will play Whitney. So you have Pottsboro, who is 10-1. They won last week 33-14 against Gladewater. And Whitney, 
They advance. They are 8-3 after their 38-15 win against Teague. Uh, so to recap what Pottsboro did last week, um, uh, Major McBride, 21 carries, 70 yards, touchdown run. Also had a touchdown pass to Jude Bentley, who caught two touchdown passes uh, as part of his five uh, receptions for 64 yards and the two touchdowns. Halen Flanagan, 14 of 21 passing, 225 yards. He had uh, two touchdown passes. Um, He also ran for a score, had 13 carries for 44 yards. Um, And uh, Cameron Saunders had the other touchdown. He had three catches for 78 yards. Reed Thompson, uh, four catches for 45 yards. Uh, McBride also had uh, a couple catches for 29 yards. So he uh, he almost had uh, 100 yards from scrimmage uh, in this one as well. Uh, Pottsboro is up 20 to seven at halftime. They kind of put things away. It's 33 to seven going into the fourth quarter, um, and and they were able to to put that game away. Um, not I mean I don't I don't know I didn't know what to expect going in. We talked about last week, Gladewater had a losing record, um, but they normally are pretty good. They, they like we, we talked about this was a matchup from a couple years ago in the playoffs. Um, that was a close one. Um, but again, I think Pospor just kind of took care of business. Um, you know, they still, they've had that balance um, with the run pass where you, you, you're not, you're not relying solely on one or the other. You're getting it done on, on, in both ways. Um, and now you've got a Whitney team, um, this is this is a matchup. I think this could be a shootout. Um, I, for just from looking at Whitney and their scores and and what they've done, um, I I think this has a chance to be to be uh, a potential for a shootout. Um, and Whitney has experience. They're trying to reach the third round for the second time in three years. Uh, Pottsboro's trying to get here for the first time since making it all the way to the state championship game in 2019. Um, so you've got a little more experience. Um, on the Whitney side about them doing stuff in the in the playoffs and making uh, making it uh, past this point. You know, of course, Pospor made it last year, but this is the round that they lost in last year, um, losing to Malkoff. Um, and so, 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 oh, and, I, and I will say this is a Thursday game at 7 p.m. at Mesquite Memorial Stadium. Um, and so, I'm interested. I'm interested in this one because um, the winner is going to play Mineola Grandview. Which again, I you know it's funny how the bracket works out from a Pottsboro standpoint. Um, obviously, Mineola is in their district. They've already beaten Mineola um, to, to to as part of that district championship in 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 five three A Division one. And Grandview is the team that beat uh, Pottsboro in the championship game two thousand nineteen as part of back to back championships for the Zebras. Um, so again, there's a little history there. If if Pottsboro is able to advance to the region semifinals. Uh, no matter who wins on the other side of the on the other part of the bracket, um, but just I, I just get a sense, you know, I, we, we've talked about Pottsboro all year. Um, you know, they continue to put up points in the 30s. Um, they they're only the only loss that they, they scored 27, and if they would have scored at the end to win that game, they would have gotten to the 30s. They've just been very consistent. That you know, their worst game offensively has been a, a pretty good game that a lot of people would take, and a lot of games that would win you could win a game with that. Um, and from what like I said, from what I'm seeing from Whitney, um, if they're going to, if the way they've won games and the way they've, they've kind of done it is, is with their offense. Um, and so it would not surprise me if maybe this is back and forth before, um, you know, somebody, somebody kind of takes advantage, um, whether it's a turnover or, or something like that in the second half. Um, so, so it's going to be interesting to see if, if Potsboro, you know, if Potsboro can go score for score, they've had to do it a couple times. Um, they've, they, they did it well in district play. Um, like we said, the one loss to, to Whitesboro, um, they weren't able to do that, but everything else has been smooth sailing for Pottsboro. The, the only other game that has really been close, um, is the Winsboro game. I know the, the, the Van Alstine game at the beginning of the season, um, was close at the end, but they had control of that before, um, Van Alstine tried to make that comeback and only lost by three. Um, but again, those are, we're talking about teams that they're still playing, you know, whether it's, it's in your level or, or the level above that, you know, you played good people, um, and they're still going strong. So uh, that's Pottsboro taking on Whitney, 3A Division One Region Two area round game Thursday, seven o'clock, Mesquite Memorial Stadium. Big fan of Mesquite Memorial Stadium. Was there last week for Bells? Um, who we'll talk about here in a second. Um, they're they're great hosts. Whether you're in the media, you're a fan, you're a team 
they they're a, they're one of the best ones out there. So um, I always I'm a big fan of Muskegon Memorial Stadium and all the times I've been there and I know um, you know all the coaches that I've talked to you. That's that's one of the that's one of the nicer places to go um, for a playoff game. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the last Mesquite Memorial uh, game that we might have on the schedule um, during the uh, during the playoffs this year. Um, we'll drop down to Division Two. We have the uh, 3A Division Two Region Two area round uh, matchup of Gunner against Jacksboro. And this game is Thursday at seven o'clock at Grapevine. Um, and this is Gunner at 10 and 0 who did not play last week because of the forfeit. So they did get a result because this is the playoffs. So two, nothing against, uh, Cedar Hill training leadership, but they did not actually play a game and Jacksboro advanced by winning 55 to 35 against Wichita Falls city view. Um, this is the second time they've met in the playoffs. Um, the fun little note about this is this, Jacksboro is the team that Gunner started this huge run back in 2016 that is in year six. Um, Gunner opened the, those playoffs 57-14, uh, to 14, and then they never lost again. That's That was the, the year of the first state championship, and um, – and it's and it's been a, it's it's turned Gunner into a monster and they've been they've been a monster ever since to the point where people don't want to play him even in the playoffs. Um, so if if we have a question about this game at at, at any level, it's Gunner didn't Gunner didn't play for two weeks. That's the only thing that that is gonna is gonna stop them um, probably for a while. Um, you know everybody's picking them to go to the state championship game. Everybody's picking them to, you know, most people are picking them to win the, the whole thing. Um, at the very, at the very, uh, at the very worst in this region, really the only two teams that people are looking at um, uh, in terms of being able to knock them off uh, are Holiday, who's on the other side of the bracket. So that would be in the region final. And the other side of the bracket also is Bells, who in district play uh, played Gunner to a 24-14 game. So, uh, this side of the bracket looks pretty um, wide open, which it has for Gunner the last couple of years in this region. Obviously, they are the five-time defending region champions. Um, and so I think the only thing that you have to worry about uh, if you're Gunner is if um, you come out slow. And, and again, do you want to give somebody like Jacksboro hope? They're 8-3. and three, They're a good team. Um they're having their best season, you know, since 2017. Um, so the, 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 you have kids that aren't that haven't experienced that, but they are experiencing this this really good run. Um, you know, they put up 55 points last week. Um, so if if you let them hang around for a little bit, maybe it gives them confidence. But I don't think anybody is thinking along the lines of that that Gunner's not going to advance, uh, and the winner waiting on and on the. Um, and the next game is the Callisburg Palmer winner. Um, Palmer uh, obviously beat Howe last week, uh, which we will talk about here uh, as we work our way down the um, the in the bracket in 3A Division II. Um, and Callisburg, um, for selfish reasons, reasons I would want Gunnar Callisburg to play because it would be a close it'd be close to home. Um, so that would be the selfish reason for me, uh, as opposed to playing Palmer. Um, but that's that's if you're if you're wanting to plan ahead um, for what would be available after Thanksgiving, um, you're looking at Callisburg Palmer. And if you know Gunner, you're probably talking about a two o'clock uh, th- game somewhere um, because um, Coach Fizell, um, not that he's superstitious, I wouldn't say that, but he does stick to his um, he sticks to his guns when it comes to. Uh, picking stadiums and days and times, um, and and he's just it's it's habit, and so um, I can I've been pretty good about about guessing where they would play things. Um, if they were to play City View, um, because Gunner didn't play, uh, they had they had worked out ahead of time who who they, where they would play who, and I, I won't I won't I won't put it out there because I don't know if it matter whatever it does matter, but I knew where he would play I knew exactly where he was going to play City View. And when I asked him, I said, you don't even need to tell me. I said, I know where you're going to play. And I said it, and he said, yep, 
because that's how it works there. They're, they're so they're so locked into their routine um, that you that you can kind of guess and pick and choose where they would play. Um, so Callisburg Palmer winner is waiting. Um, I think that's a really good matchup. Um, just looking at uh, you know a Callisburg team uh, that obviously maybe people around here pay attention to because you know Coach uh, Eddie Gill who was at uh, Whitesboro for so long has took over at Callisburg. He's got them you know making the playoffs all the time, making some runs. Um, they finished, they finished second to holiday in that district. So obviously, um, you know, not, not a bad team to finish second place. Um, that also would have been interesting just to point out that if Calisburg, cause it, cause it was the final game of the regular season. If Calisburg had beaten holiday, holiday would be on this side of the bracket. Um, this would be holiday Palmer instead of Calisburg Palmer. And that may have, that may have had big implications, um, in the bracket, um, you know, for if someone if there was a potential team to knock off Gunner, uh, just you know, looking at it from the outside, that would have been one of those uh, that would have been one of those bracket changers for sure. Um, but again, you're talking about uh, a Gunner team. This is what they do. Not just in this recent group. You know, I went back and looked. You know, they've been in the second round every year since 2006. So not only do they make the playoffs, they usually win at least one round in the playoffs. And then, like we've said, this this run the last six years. Um, has just been nothing short of phenomenal, and uh, they're going to look to get – they're going. I know they're anxious. They're eager. Um, they're kind of frustrated that why is this happening to us? We had to – we couldn't play a non-district game. Uh, we had our regular bye week. Now we had to have a bye last week um, via the forfeit. Um, it stinks for the kids. It stinks for – it stinks for all the kids. It stinks for the seniors. You know, you only get X number of games. And, yeah, if you're a gunner, you're probably getting – you know, three, four, five extra games, um, you know, but they lost two games that they didn't get to actually play in. And for a senior, that stinks. Um, for some of these underclassmen, for anybody who has watched a Gunner game, um, you know, when they get up big, they put in their their backups. They put in the backups' backups. They put in young kids to get experience, to get time to reward them for the hard work they do every week. And when you have a chance to play these games and then you don't, I and mean, this is frustrating for everybody. Um, so, so I feel for them. And the other thing to point about this game. So this game is at Thursday at seven at Grapevine. Um, school is closed at Gunner on Thursday because the volleyball team is at the state tournament for the third straight year. And they are playing at 11 o'clock in a state semifinal against Columbus. Um, if they're not the favorite to win it all they're the only other team is Bushland, who is the two time defending champ who has beaten Gunner uh, at state both years. Um, two years ago, it was in the semifinals, which technically was not at state. It was at in Vernon because of COVID, and we did not have an actual uh, Final Four, uh, but it was the state semifinals. It was, you know, it was, it was the state. And then last year in the championship match, uh, they met again, and Bushland came out on top. Um, so there's a lot, uh, there's a lot riding on, uh, this group of, of, of talented seniors who are wanting to uh, to go out with the championship. Uh, there's a 50-50 chance that they have to go through Bushland again. Uh, Bushland and East Bernard are in the, in the other semifinal. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of Gunner people going to make a day out of it, go to that game at 11, uh, go get some lunch, uh, and then maybe make their way over to Gunner, maybe get, maybe get some dinner, and then go to that game. I will be doing that. I'm doing the Gunner double. So join me, won't you? Let's go watch some volleyball at 11 o'clock at the Curtis Colwell Center down in Garland. Uh, see what happens. If Gunner wins, they'll play at 11 o'clock for the state championship. Uh, the 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 Bushland-East Bernard game is after them, so they won't know, um, you know until until that's done who they're actually going to play. Um, and then then head over to then head over to Grapevine watch watch Gunner Jacksboro. Uh, make a whole day out of it, and so that's the plan. So Gunner versus Jacksboro, 3A Division Two Region Two area round, 7, 7 p.m. on Thursday at Grapevine. The other game that we have in 3A Division Two Region Two area round this week, the Bells Panthers take on Comanche. Uh, this game is on Thursday at 7 p.m. at Springtown. And uh, Bells is nine and two. They won last week, forty-two to thirteen against Blooming Grove. Comanche won sixty-nine to twenty-seven against Henrietta, and that makes them ten and one. 
this is a opponent that has had a huge turnaround. Uh, last year, they won one game. They went one and nine. And this year, they've got some young talent uh, on the offensive side of the ball, and that has propelled them um, to already 10 wins. Um, this is only the third time since 1976 that they have won 10 games in a season. Um, so they're riding high. They're doing good things out there. Uh, but Bells has been uh, what it has been the last couple years. Slot T, making deep runs. Went to the region semifinals last year, trying to get there for the third time in four seasons. And um, they will do that with a win here. Uh, and they will play the Holiday Scory roster winner, which we assume is going to be Holiday because Holiday is uh, – when we talked about those rankings at the end of the season, uh, in th- in 3A Division Two, not just in the region, in the whole 3A Division Two, Gunner was one, Holiday was two, and Bells was five. You had three of the top five teams in this region. Um, and unfortunately, if there's a rematch of last year's game, which went to overtime between Bells and Holiday, you'll have two of the top five meeting in the third round. Uh, but before Bells can get there, they have to take care of Comanche. And in order to take on Comanche, they had to win last week against Blooming Grove. We talked about how it was a rematch of the year before. And uh, it was not a close game. And this turned out to be not a close game as well. Uh, Bells goes up 28 to nothing at halftime. Uh, they were up 35 nothing before uh, Blooming Grove is able to get on the scoreboard, and uh, it was 42 to seven going to the fourth quarter. Um, and Bell's does what they do. Uh, they threw one pass uh, that was incomplete, and then they ran 57 times for over 300 yards. Um, Spencer Hines, uh, 10 carries, 111 yards, three touchdowns. Grady Waldrip, 22 carries, 109 yards. Brock Baker, 13 carries, 64 yards uh, with three TDs as well. And that's all she wrote. Um, you know, very similar score to last year between these two. Bells obviously showed that they were the better team. Um, and uh, that's what you would expect from a team, you know, that is state, state ranked, um, that is that that is eight and 8-2, whose only losses, you know, we have this little Rad Robin thing. Uh, they only lost to Gunner. They only lost to Whitesboro. Uh, obviously, those teams are highly, highly thought of and, and uh, highly ranked um, and, and are still going and are expected to put together big runs. Um, and if Bells is able to win uh, this matchup, this will be their first 10-win season since 1996. So they've been, they've been on, they've gotten a nine the last couple years based on um, you know, their schedule in the regular season, and then depending on how far they got in the playoffs. So they have a chance to, to improve to 10-2 and two, uh, and, and have the most wins um, in quite a while at Bells, uh, even though they have been making these deep runs uh, the last couple of years. And so, you know, I look at it and I go, you know, Bells has the experience. Um, they have um, an offense that obviously a lot of people have had trouble stopping. Um and and they, they obviously the, the rankings people have them ranked high. I, I this is one of those you know you look at the records and you go well, why is this a second round game? This should not be a second round game. Um, but it's obvious you know Com- Comanche lost a um, lost a game in their district and that didn't give them or excuse me they won their district and that put them on the side of the bracket and and this is new. This is this is not something that was um, you know that was not in in the bracket last year to where. Um, you know, Bell, because Bells is in the same spot that they were in last year, and obviously Comanche uh, making that huge rise. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in this one. Um, you know, obviously if if you're on the Bell side, you feel good because you know what you're getting into. You're you've been there, done that. A lot of these seniors, uh, you know, have been key people the last couple of years. Um, and then you have Comanche who's riding sky high. They won one game last year. Everything making the playoffs was gravy. Um, what they did in their district was great. I mean, it was, they've improved so much that, um, you know, at some point you, you start believing that, Hey, we are this good. And, you know, 10 and one is 10 and one. Um, if you can do that, you're doing something right. And so this could, this could be an interesting matchup. And like I said, um, you know, holiday is lurking. Um, and, and I think that's, that's a, that's a safe bet as you can say, um, for what's going to happen, you know, next week. Um, the winner of this is going to play Holiday. Um, the question is, who's it going to be? 
And if Bell's, you know, does what they do and sticks to their game plan, you know, in this game, um, you know, they, they only had, um, they only had eight possessions, but they scored on six of them. Um, and the two that they didn't, one was at the end of the game when they ran out like the, they ran out the final eight minutes of the game after uh, Blooming Grove scored again uh, to make it 42 to 13 with 7:53 left. Um, you know, they on, on, they kicked it onside, whatever, squib it, and Bells recovers, and then they ran out the clock. Uh, they ran out the final 7:53. Um, so they weren't trying to score there, and then the only other time they did in this game, they, it was fourth and short. They went for it and came up short, and every other possession they scored on, and that's what Bells does. Um, you know, they're very efficient. Um, this this game was more about, um, you know, the six and the eight and the ten yard chunks, and not some of the big plays. You know, you look at all the, um, if you look at all six touchdowns. You know, they're six yards, four yards, nine yards, five yards, five yards. The last one was twenty-eight yards. Um, so it it was more drives. There were not there were not what were there were not a lot of huge breakaway runs um, like you normally expect from um, from Bells. But I think part of that too is you had a Blooming Grove team that played them last year. They knew what worked. They knew what didn't work. And even coach um, coach West said, you know, after on the first drive they kind of did some things because that's what they were doing. He was kind of being a little stubborn in the play calling, and then he kind of saw what Blooming Grove was doing, and they said, okay, if they're going to keep doing this, we're going to do this, and it, and, and it worked. Um, and so so that's how you get to the second round rather easily. Um, you just take what they give you, and Bells is really good about that. Um, they've got three guys uh, we, we talk about all year long. You don't know who it's going to be um, on that day. Um, sometimes it's Hines. Sometimes it's Waldrop. Sometimes it's Baker, and they just um, they just sort of alternate, and whatever's working on that day, that's what's working. That's what's working on that day, and and they stick with it, and and it may be three different three weeks in a row, a different guy does something, but that's that's how you win. Um, you know, you don't have one guy that somebody can key on. You don't have um, you you spread it out. You do you you make you make them defend the whole field, um, and not just where this guy goes or. If, you know we're gonna we're gonna spy him with a couple guys because he's the he's the only one that can beat us. They've got three guys that can beat us, and um and it's hard to stop that for sure. Um so that's Bell's Comanche three A Division two Region two area round seven p.m. Thursday at Springtown. And the other team that we need to talk about in three A Division two uh, Region two who did not advance uh, was the How Bulldogs. Um, they came up short in their by-district game against uh, Palmer, a 39-19. Obviously, we've already mentioned uh, what Palmer has done. And so, how ends its season at 6-5? and five. Um, Unfortunately, they got down early, 22-0 at halftime. Um, they did get within 29-6 um, uh, um, and, and just w- weren't able to put something together. Um, even though they scored all their points in the second half. Um, we talked going into that game, quarterback status, uh, Austin Haley got hurt uh, before uh, the Lone Oak game. Uh, would he, w- w- did they just hold him out because they wanted to give him the extra time to get healthy? Obviously, that was not the case. He is, uh, you know, he hurt his throwing shoulder, um, which, um, which obviously if you're a quarterback, you need, and it was obviously hurt bad enough that he was unable to, um, to play. Um, despite it being the playoffs and, um, you know, there were some people that, that thought, um, that I had talked to that said if he was healthy, you know, maybe it's a lot close, it's, it's closer than this. Um, there were some people that thought maybe if he was able to play, um, that they might actually be able to pull the upset, um, in this game. Um, but unfortunately, um, his career ended with him on the sidelines the last couple games. And you really feel for him in that regard, because, um, you know, here's a kid who started from day one freshman year and was um, was in the lineup unless he wasn't because of injury. Um, you know, he took some 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 hard knocks uh, from a from a from a losing standpoint to go through um, the back to back 0 and 10 seasons being the quarterback. You know, the it's, it's always on you the spotlight when you're the quarterback, um, and then you throw in what he's done in his career. Um, in the how record books, he basically holds every passing record and for them to finally get to the playoffs, um, 
and for him to not be able to play, I mean, that that's just that's a killer. Um, you know, for a kid who's been the face of that program, you know, like I said, literally since day one, he he walked in and, and was the quarterback, and for him to not be able to play, you know, I'm sure that was killing him. I'm sure it was killing a lot of people. Um, that he was not able to play. Um, but they gave it a go, and then unfortunately, uh, Garen Langford, who stepped in, um, in the Lone Oak game, and was able to, they were able to win that game and 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 make the playoffs based on the tiebreakers. He got hurt in this one, so they're essentially on the third quarterback um, with Cooper Jones, um, you know, who's normally a receiver, normally you know short yardage, uh, direct snap kind of, you know, qu- you know he goes to quarterback, but he's not a quarterback. He's he's taking direct snaps and then you know jumping over piles and and getting short touchdowns at the goal line. So he had to take over at quarterback um, in the second half. Um, Antoine Rattler does finish, uh, didn't finish his career strong, uh, 23 carries, 148 yards and two touchdowns. And Jones actually had a touchdown pass, uh, to Tristan Williams, uh, who had two catches for 54 yards. Uh, Ryan Huff with two catches for 34 yards. Uh, but again, it, it would, it, it stinks for how you, you wish that they could have been healthy, um, you know, going into this game that, um, you know, it's the first playoff game since 2016. It's their best season since 2016. And again, we, we, we've, we've harped on it all year because, you know, it's, it's been so long since they've been able to do this where, um, not only are they competitive, but they're in the playoffs. Um, you know, they had that, that long, uh, overall losing streak going back to 2019. They had the, uh, the, the long losing, the district losing streak. So it wasn't even that they were winning in non-district. It was, it was everything, um, and they had won, you know, if they had been able to win one more game, they would have won as many games from 2017 to 2021 as they did this year. That number was seven and they got six alone just this year. Um, you know, a, a great start, uh, for Lance Bryan as the head coach taking over, um, you know, you take over a program that's 0 and 10, two years in a row, and you get them to six wins and a playoff spot, um, it's a really good foundation uh, going forward for what you can do um, with this group. All right, we'll move down to the uh, 2A level, and we'll do some 2A Division One Region 2 recaps because, unfortunately, both of the teams at that level uh, lost last week. Um, uh, we'll touch on the loss by the White Red Tigers against Toller. Uh, they were eliminated 61 to nothing. Um, you know, as, as a whole unconsistent, just an inconsistent season for, or an inconsistent season for White Wright. Um, you know, they had some injuries. We, we talked about that as the season went on, um, guys in and out of the lineup. Um, and so they, they could never really get a full, um, a full run with a lot of guys to kind of maybe put string together something. Um, obviously they were able to make the playoffs in that district. Uh, in six in six two A Division one, um, you know they had some some you know that you know you lose to an SNS team that only win that's their only win, but then you bounce back this last game uh, of the regular season. You take Tioga, who's the undefeated district champ, into overtime, and so so there were flashes there. You know we saw we saw how good they could be. You know they 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 um they beat a Celeste team that made the playoffs. Um, they 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 had their moments. Um, and so it was just, it was, it was one of those things where they were in a situation first round, you know, Toller's undefeated, Toller's state ranked, um, you know, they were, they were four and six, um, going into the playoffs. Um, so they finished four and seven, um, and, and that was going to be a tall task to at least maybe kind of keep it close. Um, so you hope that they would have been able to do that. Um, but obviously going forward, you know, we talked about the drop down, um, would they still be, you know, competitive? Would they still be able to get things done? Uh, and they did make the playoffs again after after making it, you know, the year before uh, in 3A. And again, it was just, you know, they had a couple games. You know, they, they lose in overtime against Tioga. They lose by a touchdown to Nakona. Um, they, lose, they lose a close game to s and And the other team in 6-2A Division One that we've already mentioned a couple times, Tioga. Uh, unfortunately, their great season comes to an end. Uh, they lost to Hamilton, forty-one to fifteen, um, and this was a a, a a one seed losing to a four seed. Um, so they finished the season at eight and three. Uh, we talked about obviously the undefeated uh, run through six two A, strong non district. 
Um, and unfortunately, they fell behind 21 nothing at halftime. Um, tried to make a game of it uh, in the second half. Uh, I think it was 20. It was 21 to nine. Uh, they got a safety and then a touchdown. Uh, Chase Evans had 14 carries, 62 yards, and had both of the touchdowns. But unfortunately, the hole in the first half was um, too big to overcome. Um, but again, you talk about a program that's that's building and being consistent. You know, last year they made the playoffs. Um, ended up with a losing record because they were five and five in the regular season and lost the opening round uh, game against Celeste. This year, obviously, a much better regular season, win a district championship. Um, and unfortunately, you know, they weren't able to make that next step in the playoffs, at least get to the second round. Um, but, but obviously it's a good foundation. Again, they had, we talked about last year, they had a lot of guys coming back. Um, again, next year, they're going to have a, a lot of guys come back. Obviously, you know, uh, uh, Evans is one of the guys that they're going to lose, uh, on defense guy, uh, they're, they're going to lose some guys as well. Alex Batista is a guy that they're going to lose there, um, at the linebacker spot, you know, their best defensive player. Um, you know, but a lot of guys are back. Uh, Jonah Grubbs, who had a, had a really breakout season this year at running back as Johnny Dorpinghouse was injured for most of the year, came back the, the last game of the regular season and, and here in the playoffs, but was was limited. Um, and then, um, Aust- you know, Austin Norwood had to make the move over to quarterback. He's no longer a receiver. You'd like to think that next year Hayden Hilliard would be back uh, at the quarterback spot after getting hurt before the season even began this year. Um a lot of the receivers are back. Uh, Greenwood McAden was a guy who who really showed some things with some big some big games this year. Um, so I think they're probably still the favorite in this district. Um, obviously, the next big thing is going to be can you take that next step um, and start to win in the playoffs? Now you've gotten to hey, we're making the playoffs. We're got the winning record. Can we find a way to get the job done in the playoffs? And unfortunately, they were not able to do that this year. Um, but still, and overall, when you go eight and three, um, you know you have you, you, since they moved up to um, to the eleven man ranks in uh, two thousand eighteen, um, they almost matched their much like how um, they they matched they they basically matched their win total from eighteen nineteen twenty and twenty one. Um, they almost matched that just with the eight wins this year. So it's a big jump, and now you know you have your baseline. Um, you've got. You know, winning record, win the district. Um, now can you can you get that third check mark and um and get to the the next round of the playoffs and beyond. Um, and the last team uh left to talk about down at the two A Division two Region two level is Collinsville, and they have their area round game again. Another long trip. Uh, Friday at six p.m. They are going to Brownwood to face McCamey. Uh, so Collinsville is ten and one. They won last week twenty one seven against Haskell. And McCamey is nine and two. Uh, they won forty-two to six against Roscoe, and this is a wonderful realignment uh, surprise um, because you wouldn't think of it. But if you don't know where McCamey is, much like I didn't know where McCamey was, uh, it's basically south of uh, Odessa. So you're talking that's Region Two in Two A Division Two, um, going all the way out that far west. To be have this be a second round game, um, and you have to go to Brownwood to play it. Um, so Collinsville beat Haskell last week, like we said, twenty one seven. Um, scoreless first quarter. Collinsville's only up seven nothing at halftime. They are they are able to 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 open it up to where they're up twenty one nothing before Haskell gets on the board. Um, and you look at uh, the stats in this one: Rylan Newman, uh, twenty three carries, one hundred thirty three yards, and a touchdown. Logan Jenkins, uh, 23 of 29 passing, 188 yards, did have an interception, uh, did throw a touchdown pass to Reed Patterson, who had four catches for 54 yards. Uh, Jenkins also was 19 carries, 99 yards, and a touchdown run. Uh, Carter Scott had seven catches for 53 yards. Uh, Nathan Bocanegra, 6 for 41. Colin Barnes, 5 for 31. Um, so not a lot of, not a lot of big plays in this one. I saw the score, um, and obviously Haskell had a 500 record coming in. Um, I thought it would be a little bit of an easier, uh, a win. You know, obviously Conswell had to kind of sweat it out. It was, it was, it was close, you know, 14, nothing, uh, going to the, going to the, uh, fourth quarter. Um, not that it looked, you know, Haskell did have three turnovers. Um, so obviously, you, you know, you really like what you saw from the pirate defense. Um, you know, they almost got the shutout. Um, before giving up that fourth quarter um, touchdown, 
but um, I thought it would be a little easier on offense. Um, and obviously, um, when you look at McCamey, uh they've won nine games, and in six of those nine games, they've held their opponent to two touchdowns or less. So their their defense has played really well when they win. So if you want to say, hey, that's if you put up points, uh, only two people have beaten McCamey. So it's 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 hard. To, it's not a large sample size, but the people that have beaten McCamey have put up points. You know they're not they're not winning or they're not losing games fourteen to three or twenty one seven for an example. Um, Cosmo's trying to get to the third round for the first time since two thousand thirteen. So it's been a while on that. Um, also of note, um, if if Cosmo does win this game and they get to eleven and one, they are um, at eleven wins. Uh, for the first time since 2000, and that's the school record, so they would match that if they were able to to get that done as well. And the winner will play the Winthorst Sterling City winner. Um, uh, I would imagine uh, the if it's Winthorst, that would be a little bit closer to home. Sterling City, I think, is out there, um, but I haven't looked at a map yet because I don't like to look at that stuff until we actually know the the outcomes. Um, but so again, we we have some of these really interesting matchups. In the second round, um, Collinsville McCamey is one of them because of the records. You know, Bell's Comanche is one of them because of the records. You know, it's nine and two versus ten and one, nine and two versus ten and one. Um, you know, you don't you don't normally see that um, that in the second round. That's more of a third round, uh, the cream rising to the to the top type of a thing. And um, so so we could have some interesting outcomes. And obviously, like, again, this is another game you're talking about. It's a long drive, you know, it's three plus hours, um, it's probably maybe closer to four in the bus, um, so you're talking about, you know, you're leaving probably at noon, uh, if not earlier, to get out there, and it may just, and, and they've got, a, and it's the same for McCamey, I mean, this is a halfway point, because McCamey to Collinsville is like six, six and a half hours, and that's not on a bus, so um, you are talking um, you are talking a really long drive for both sides, and you just don't know how that's going to affect people. And again, you know, I know it may not be much, but you know, this game is at six o'clock. Um, the Whitesboro game is at six o'clock, and it's one of the things we always wonder about when we get to um, at the day after Thanksgiving when people play at weird times. Who adjusts better? Because you're used to, you know, seven o'clock or seven thirty. And your body clock every every Friday is a little is you get used to that routine and sometimes it throws it a little off because you have to be ready an hour an hour and a half earlier to play the game and we sometimes see that on the day after Thanksgiving when people play at two o'clock or four o'clock or part of a double header and you are stuck waiting around to warm up because the first game is still going on type of a thing um, so so that's that, that's there's always something to watch this time of year and of course. Um, the way the weather uh, has changed, we saw that with like the Van Alstine Quinn and Ford game. You know, playing in windy conditions, playing in temperatures in the 40s. Um, again, this this week, depending on what part of this, and we're and we're basically going from, you know, the Arkansas border to Odette to under Odessa, or excuse me, to 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 to, to the, almost to Midland and Odessa um, by playing in Brownwood. That there's a wide range of of temperatures of of weather and you just never know how that's going to affect um the game because because we got we have games all over the place so going to be interesting to see what happens in a lot of these games um and and hopefully we have a lot of teams playing after um of thanksgiving you know we, we only lost a, a couple teams last week um and i think again we, we we're in i think we're in pretty good shape um and maybe we, we see an upset or two uh depending on what you consider an upset uh going into the area around this week. So again, enjoy your games. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Um, stay warm if you're in a place where it's where the temperatures are dipping, um, and and stay safe traveling to these places because, like I said, um, you know, there's only a handful of games that are even an hour. You know, even even trying to get to Mesquite Memorial for a game on a Thursday, which I did last week, um, you know, took me over an hour and a half because of traffic and accidents, and that sort of thing. So um, for those people that are traveling really far away uh, and late at night for some of these games getting back, um, stay safe. Hope your team wins. We hope all the teams win in the playoffs. We want everybody to go as far as they can. Uh, Keep me busy. Keep me running around. 
Um, in addition to volleyball uh, ending with, with Gunner at the state tournament, with basketball getting underway, boys and girls are going to be in full swing you know, here in the next week or two as, as uh, you know, people uh, pick up their sports because volleyball and, and football is ending. Um, a, lot of, a lot of fun things going on around here. And so uh, I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Uh, enjoy the games this week. And uh, we will talk to you next week here on the Herald Democrat Sports Podcast.